Now let's talk about Frank Frazetta's personal history. A handsome, well-dressed ladies' man, Frazetta was a natural visual storyteller, from his beginnings in comics to the illustrations that are now synonymous with his name. As he once explained to Seconds Magazine, I love storytelling and now I do it in one page. I like to think that my paintings have a beginning, a middle, and an end when you look at them. Oh, so you think he's hot, huh? Yes, I do, as a matter of fact, robot. Frank Frazetta was a total hunk. Google him, I'm not kidding. In fact, Frank Frazetta kept himself in really great shape because he would use himself as a reference model for his own paintings. Whoa, he was pumped. He was ripped, robot. It's ripped, that's how you say it. I'm kind of ripped too. Check out these buttons, rock hard buttons. Frank was three years old when he sold his first crayon drawing to his grandma for a penny. By the time he turned eight in 1936, some of his teachers had been encouraging his parents to enroll him in the Brooklyn Academy of Fine Arts. How come you never encouraged me to join the academy? Have you even seen my fish monster drawing? It's great for my age. It's a wonderful drawing, robot. You may not be quite ready for the Academy, but young Frank totally was. This is one of my favorite stories about Frank Frazetta. So the deal was his parents take him to the Academy. Now there's this guy there who runs it named Michael Falanga, who's this amazing fine artist, right? And he's seen a lot of people bring their kids in, saying how great their kids are, and they're always garbage kids, and he's like, whatever. So not young Frank, all right? He sits this kid down, he gives him some stuff to draw with, he gives him a picture of ducks or something, he's like, hey, I need you to copy this picture of ducks, and he leaves. He comes back, and apparently he was so impressed with what Frank drew that he snatched it and started running down the hall screaming, Mamma Mia, we have a genius on our hands. How come you never said Mamma Mia at my drawings? Moving on, moving on. Frank studied at the Brooklyn Academy of Fine Arts for eight years and left when it shut down when he was 16 to go on to become a professional artist. That's right, this guy was working professionally as an artist at 16 years old. Wow, impressive. It's very impressive. As a teenager and young man in the 40s and 50s, Fritz, as he would sometimes sign his stuff, found work drawing Western, mystery, fantasy, and animal comics, as well as his own books. His version of Flash Gordon was a shirtless brute capable of pummeling alien monsters with his fists when he wasn't hanging out with hot topless chicks. Did you say topless chicks? That's right, robot. One of the many things that Frank Frazetta was very proficient in drawing was the female form. In fact, Frazetta is just as famous for his babes as he is for his barbarians, and we would be scolded by art historians around the world not to bring up his voluptuous ladies. You know, I'm pretty good at drawing my barbarians, and my babes are getting pretty good too. I don't see any woman drawings. I don't think you're capable of drawing a lady yet. Show me a woman drawing you've done. I'm working on it right now. All I see is monsters and skeletons and weird... You're right, I can't draw girls. Learn how to draw women, and then you can go to the academy. Even though Frazetta loved to draw the ladies, he settled down with one and one only. In 1956, Frank married a woman named Eleanor Kelly, who became both his business partner and model, as well as the mother of Frank's two sons and two daughters. His Buck Rogers illustrations led to a stint as an extra hand for Al Cap's now iconic Little Abner comic strip. He was also instrumental in putting together Little Annie Fanny for Playboy magazine, and his work for Creepy, Eerie, and Vampirella is the stuff of pop culture legend. Frazetta worked in comic books for around a decade. However, after 1954, there was a long period where he suddenly couldn't get work anymore. Why couldn't he get work anymore? Was he a slacker? Frazetta was in no way a slacker. You see, in 1954, comics were attacked by mainstream society after psychologist Frederick Wortham's book, Seduction of the Innocent, convinced a nation into scapegoating comic books as the cause behind juvenile delinquency. The entire comic book industry, which was huge at the time, was nearly destroyed, with artists and writers unemployed across America. Frank even had worked on some of the EC comics, which were at the heart of the congressional hearing that ruled against comics and put the company out of business. What? People really thought comic books were the worst thing ever? Yes, they thought that they were making children into violent criminals and they had to be stopped, so they started the Comics Code, which was really stupid. Really? Comic books? Yes, and it's incredible that someone as talented as Frazetta couldn't get work, but that was the environment of the time. And this particular incident affected all of the greater creators of the 40s and 50s. In 1965, Frazetta pivoted into doing movie posters. Movie posters? That's right. 
After someone from United Artists picked up a copy of Mad Magazine with Frazetta's satirical drawing of Ringo Starr on the back, the studio offered Frank his first movie gig. This resulted in the poster for What's New Pussycat, the 1965 Peter Sellers comedy written by Woody Allen. And this single job paid him what he was used to making in an entire year of creating comic books. Wow, well, comic books don't pay well, I bet. No, they don't. And they still don't. More movie work followed, including now classic posters for Hotel Paradiso, The Fearless Vampire Killers, and Mad Monster Party. Greater Creators is a study of creative icons who push the boundaries of art and whose influence can still be felt today. So take a seat, class is in session.